In this video, we're going to talk about the anatomy of a long-form sales letter. We're actually going to talk about a hybrid long-form sales letter, which is proven to convert a lot better than just a regular long-form sales letter. It's a time-tested and proven structure that's going to guide your prospects through the purchase decision. Let me tell you something. Creating the copy, the sales copy, for your sales page is an important part of the process. As a matter of fact, the process doesn't even begin if the sales copy is ineffective. But it's not just the sales copy. See, it's a whole lot of little pieces to the puzzle that have to come together properly on that first page. And unfortunately, people don't give this part of the product creation process enough attention. They spend so much time creating the product itself, doing the research, creating the members area, the download page, the payment buttons, all that, you know, all that jazz that's going to, you know, that the, that the buyer is going to see uh, after the purchase is made. And then what they do is they, they get to the last step and they leave the sales page for last and then they just throw something together. They realize like, oh, well, I just got to make a sales page and they make this sales page and they literally defeat the purpose because nobody, you know, if the sales page doesn't work, Nobody's going to even see all that beautiful product creation that you just worked so hard on for all that time. So it's a very, very important page. As a matter of fact, I know a lot of people that before they even create a product, they create a sales page or at least the outline for the sales page. And they literally use the sales page as a wish list of what they're, they want their product to be. So they, they kind of like reverse engineer the process. And that's a very powerful way to really make a sales page that, you know, that's going to grow as your product grows. But what I'm going to focus on here is the key elements, the specific things that you need to have inside of your sales letter. Now, you're going to change them around. You're going to test things. You know, there, there is no set end all be all strategy and formula that will work in any scenario for any audience and any product. It, it's just impossible to predict exactly how any particular source of traffic is going to respond to any particular sort of sales copy for a particular type of product. It's, it's impossible. There's just way too many variables, but I've tested and proven that what I'm going to show you now, this structure, these elements have worked very, very well for me. Now, a hybrid sales page, which is what I was telling you about a second ago, it's it's very likely that, that using a hybrid uh, will actually increase the amount of sales that you're going to make. Hybrid combines long form sales letter elements with a video in the deck. So it's kind of like a hybrid, a combination of a video sales letter and a long form sales letter. Now, the deck, if you're wondering, well, what the hell is a deck? What's he talking about? Well, that's the most important part of your page, at least visually anyway, to get people to stay on the page. It's, what's they, it's what they see first. When they first land on your page, the deck is the top six inches, basically, of the page. The part that's visible on their screen without them having to scroll. And it's visible on their screen, whether they're on a laptop or on an HD screen. It's the, it's the fold. It's the top part of the page. What they see there will determine whether or not they continue reading the page or whether they surf away. Therefore, visually, uh, that is a very, very important part of your page. It's where everything begins. And if you can't hook them and get them to stay based on what they see there in the deck, then you've lost them. Nothing that you do that follows is any good to you because you, you've lost them already. The second thing that's going to be the most important part of why you know people will either buy or not buy is going to be the offer itself. How did you structure it? How did you price it? What 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 are you giving away for what amount? Uh, what are the bonuses that you're giving, if any? How how have you, how are you setting up the offer? Are you giving the the bulk of it up in the front and then doing a downsell in the back or an upsell, or are you just starting with some sort of a lead magnet and a low ticket offer and then leading them to the bigger price stuff. It, it, the offer, the way you structure the offer is, is the next thing that, that's going to determine uh, or rather the next big thing that's going to determine whether or not people buy on your sales page. This video is going to cover the four main sections of a hybrid sales letter and that is the deck, the body, the close, and the call to action, right? So the deck, the body, the close, and the call to action, the four main sections. Each section has several components, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to you about the components of each section in this video, and then in the sales page templates, you'll be able to follow along and see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, 
the deck. That's where it all begins. It's the top part of your sales page. Uh, this is where they see a header image. Uh, it's, it's the first thing they look at. You, you should have a nice small logo. It should be clean and visually appealing. One of the big mistakes uh, that a lot of people make is they create these flashy, really busy, complicated looking headers with fire and flying money and dollar bills raining from the sky and Corvettes and Ferraris and just so much going on at the top that you look at it and you're like, whoa, that what's going on here? It's like, wow. Uh, and, it, you know, that can be a little bit too abrasive. Usually, uh, what I've found in my business that really tends to convert a lot better is having a clean logo. Uh, yeah, it's, it's good to have a visual logo, an actual logo, not just text, but having an image in the, in the actual logo of the product up on the header image. Uh, but not making it so complicated as to the point, you know, back in the day when, when it was just mini sites, uh, you know, you would, you'd pay 50, 60 bucks uh, to uh, a graphic design, uh, you know, place or website, and they'd make you this beautiful mini site that had flames and, and just all kinds of like background scrolling images and stuff like that. I've even seen websites where people have animated like cartoons and little gifs up in the header banner. And it's like, what, what, a, like, why would you put something distracting? up at the top of the you know of your sales page a nice header image cool colors remember we talked about in the last video we talked about the psychology of colors and what colors are best to use right we'll refer to that video uh, to know what what you should be doing but logos should be small clean and visually appealing a pre headline is something that I like to have right beneath the logo right beneath the header uh, and, and usually that's a challenge uh, I like to, to challenge people or, or basically put something in smaller print than, than what they're about to see in the headline. Uh, a pre-headline kind of leads them into what's about to happen. So I might ask a question or a challenge. Uh, something like, hey, ha, uh, you, you know, have you ever uh, seen someone make $100 in under five minutes using uh, nothing but his laptop? You know, uh, something like that. that. That might be like a little uh, pre-headline in small print. And then the next line might be the big discover how this one man uh, is now able to, you know, spend more time with his family because he makes $100 an hour on, you know what I mean? So it kind of one thing leads into the next. Uh, but again, the sales video is probably the, the most prominent part of the deck. And that's what I would put next to the pre-headline. So you might say, well, Omar, it's a pre-headline. Shouldn't the headline go after the pre-headline? Well, it will. It will go after the pre-headline. But since we're making this a, a, a hybrid page, what I'm going to recommend is that you insert a sales video between the pre-headline and the actual headline itself. Now, I've seen people experiment with this to, to, to quite a bit of success, actually, where they take the pre-headline and, and the headline and they put it to the left of the video. So they actually make a smaller sized video and they might put it to the left or to the right of the video within the deck of the letter. Uh, and that works very well. Also, uh, you should test it. You know, split testing is really what's going to determine what will be best for you. But the sales video should be the most prominent part of the deck in the letter. And people shouldn't have to scroll down to try to find where the sound is coming from. Has that ever happened to you? You land on a sales page, you hear some talking going on, and you're like, well, wait a second, hold on, but you can't find the video. And you're scrolling down the page, and it's like, because they have their sales video somewhere in the middle of this sales page that you have to scroll and find. Come on, dude, I'm out of there. It's like, I can't even find your video. You want me to see something and you hide it? You know, so again, these are stupid mistakes that people make that prevent them from actually making sales. Keep it simple. A pre-headline, a video, and then the headline. Uh, I put a headline beneath the video as well as a sub-headline. And, and a headline should say something about the biggest benefit of your product. People struggle. I see it on Facebook all the time. Hey, guys, I can't come up with a good headline for my product. Just name your biggest benefit. What is the biggest benefit that people will get out of your product? And, and include that somehow in your, uh, in your headline. Uh, the pre-headline leads them up, it is the challenging statement that leads them up to the big benefit and the sub-headline backs up what you just said. Okay, so that's what goes beneath the video. Then beneath that, you should show them some proof. A big proof image, maybe a screenshot, maybe a picture of you doing what you claimed that you do. Uh, if you if you made some sort of a, an income claim in your headline or in your pre-headline, then maybe a snapshot of your bank account or whatever. Uh, will now, Whatever you, do, you use here for proof will anchor everything that you just said. Uh, 
It, it literally glues everything together and justifies why I should continue reading. Okay, well, he told me he was going to tell me he's awesome at something. Then he told me what he's awesome at. Then he backed it up by telling me how he's so awesome at it. And then he showed me proof of the awesomeness. That all happened in the top six inches. You got me. You got my attention. I'm going to keep reading. Now, you can consider adding some scarcity text here at the deck beneath the uh, uh, the proof image. Maybe even a, a countdown clock if it's some sort of a sale. Uh, but urgency and scarcity tend to work w really well up here. Uh, something like, you know, uh, over 200 sold, uh, 50 remaining, offer ends Friday, November, or whatever. You know, uh, again, that's just an example. But that, that kind of stuff, if you're using that kind of impulse, uh, it should go up in the deck. You shouldn't put that all the way down. I've seen people do it down by the order button. But what good does that do if the person didn't even make it that far down the page? I like to put urgency and countdown clocks up in the deck. Uh, and then I always separate the deck from the rest of the page with an order link or an order button. You know, if you have a sales video and some proof and, and all this, everything that I just mentioned in the deck should be powerful enough to close the seal, uh, close the deal. You know, and uh, if, if you can't close the, the, the sale with it, no problem. That's what the rest of the sales page is for. But if the person's ready to buy right after seeing your video, right after reading your headline, then let them put a button there for them to buy. The order button in the deck, uh, it, it tends to be the bottom most part of the deck. Uh, if you're doing a side-by-side -side video headline kind of uh, setup in the deck, then okay, I can understand if you'd put it to the left. But again, these are the main components of the deck in your sales letter. Now let's talk about the body. The body of the letter is going to have a few different things. It starts with a greeting, and the greeting obviously should be like a letter would uh, would read. You know, it should have the date, it should have a from section, it should have a regarding section. So just like if you were getting an internal memo at your company, uh, you, you should have that alongside an actual image. I, I like to throw in an image and a picture of my script signature. Now you could, there's, there's a lot of websites online. I think the one that I use is called mylivesignature.com. Don't quote me, uh, but if you do a search for that, that word combination, live signature or mylivesignature.com, you'll find a website where you could literally type in your name and select from all these different script fonts and slopes and angles and stuff to create a really nice uh, signature image that looks like a handwritten signature. So I like to start my sales letters with the date, uh, and, and obviously it's got to be a dynamic date script. So I'm not going to put the date that I actually wrote it, but rather there will be a little script or a command next to the word date that tells the web page to actually display the current date at the time that the prospect is reading it. So it always looks to them like, wow, this was written today. Uh, so the date, the from obviously would be your name, the regarding what's this letter about. Uh, so that's almost like a, uh, a headline or like something alluding to what you're you're going to be presenting them. Uh, and I put those things alongside a picture of myself. Now listen, with the pictures of yourself, it should be a picture of yourself, of your face in a nice, happy, you know, smile, you know, from the shoulders up. You know, you're trying to establish trust and make a connection. You're not, you know, you're not impressing anybody with a picture of you hand gliding that you can't even see who the person is. That's not a freaking picture of you. You've got to try to make a connection. The whole idea of the signature, the picture, your name, all of that is to establish a connection so that they feel that they're actually talking to you so that they can relate. And they say, okay, well, oh, wow. Okay, so this is a letter from this guy named Omar. Oh, there's Omar right there. There's a picture of him and he's smiling at me. Hi, Omar. Hi. You know, that's, that's the kind of of emotion that you want to strike in the prospect when they're getting there. So a cartoon or something stupid like that is not going to help you establish the level of trust that you want. You know, look, it's not Facebook, okay? It's a sales page. It's not Twitter. So use a picture of you. Use a nice picture of yourself where you're smiling. That's another mistake. Sometimes I see pictures of people, it looks like a mug shot. And all they need is the height scale behind them. You know, it's like, they're just like looking at this like serious, you know, serious with their brow down like this is me and I'm a tough guy buy my shit you know come on you're, you're trying to again you're, you're trying to establish nice friendly positioning in the greeting of the sales page now the once you've done the greeting uh, you know the actual the from and the date and the picture and all that you're actually gonna open up your sales letter but you're gonna you're gonna bring up 
the problems. You're going you're gonna to start talking about the problems that prompted the need at hand, okay? So, for example, uh, I, I might start talking about, you know, this might be a letter from Omar uh, on today's date regarding the state of blogging today. And I might start talking about, hey, you know, I'm a blogger. I love blogging. And lately, I've realized that my blog posts just aren't getting the comments that they used to get back when I first started blogging. I think that there's a lot of things that affected this, but it was becoming a problem. So I just I just brought up the problem that literally it gave rise to this product. And that leads into the imagine. So once you've spent a few paragraphs talking about the problem and the need at hand, now you're bringing them into the imagines, which is where you take the reader to a place where they dream that they don't have the current pain that they're experiencing. So you say things like, imagine if you could write blog posts and instantly get hundreds and hundreds of comments. I mean, I remember that I used to get a lot of comments on my blog posts, but never as much as I really, really wanted. Imagine you could create a post and people from Facebook, Twitter, from all over would literally just flock to your blog and just leave positive comments, engaging po comments. What if there were stimulating conversation going on? So again, now I'm, I'm getting them to picture all of this happening. Uh, so they related initially with the problem. Now they're relating with the, the possible solution. Uh, the next thing that I do in, in the body is I establish authority on the subject, right? So I've already talked about the problem and, and what, what it could be like if the problem didn't exist, but why should I be the person to solve this problem? What makes me special? Well, if you're going to get people to buy from you, you need to establish that you're an expert. You need, to, you need to describe why the reader should buy from you and you, and you should establish expert status. You've you got to prove that you're an authority on this subject. Uh, you, your, your accolades go here, your credentials, the reason why you should be trusted on the subject needs to go here. Uh, the next part of the body is the actual presentation of the product. I love doing this with a nice big image. Uh, a, a big, beautiful image, whether it's a digital product or a physical product, there needs to be an image here. Now, I, I know when people are new, they struggle with, like, oh, Omar, I feel like it's being deceptive if I have a picture of a, of a box with the name of my product when they're not really getting a box. Get over it. Your, your client, your, your prospect needs to visualize the product. A digital, a digital item is very difficult to visu visualize. People are, don't think in links. Like they, when, when they think of your product, they're not thinking of a URL. They need to have a picture because the brain, the mind, it thinks in images. And if they don't, if they can't associate your product to uh, a, a picture, if, if they can't really picture it in their mind, then it doesn't exist to them. Subconsciously, it, you, you don't have a real substantial piece of work. Uh, so I like to use a nice big product image with a thorough list of features and benefits. We've talked about this repetitively throughout these, these videos, and that is whenever you list a feature, you have to follow it up with a benefits. Features are useless if they don't benefit me. So if you're just spouting off a whole bunch of neat, cool things that you think are cool that your product does, well, it's, it's, it's of no use to me unless you can tell me how it's going to benefit me and I can visualize myself really gaining benefit from it. So figure it out. If it's a feature, there's a benefit out there that goes along with the feature. List the features and the benefits right beneath your product. The next part of the body is social proof. Testimonials. The more the better. You should have an abundance of social. As a matter of fact, you can never have enough social proof. Uh, I remember seeing that original uh, butterfly marketing sales page. Uh, it, it's not online anymore, but man, that that page, that sales page was literally just hundreds of testimonials. At least what I, I remember as being hundreds, maybe it wasn't hundreds, but it would scroll on and on and on with testimonials from real people that were using the butterfly marketing tactics. And it was amazing to see that, like the, the majority of the sales page was just social proof. Remember, your customers can outsell you 10 to one and you should let them. Testimonials should be purposeful and concise. I always see that people make this mistake when they're new to internet marketing and new to creation of sales pages. They create a cool product and then they give out some free co you know, copies so in order to generate some testimonials, right? And that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is that you need to control what goes on your sales page. 
And some of these testimonials that people will volunteer, they're just long-winded and useless, and they're just regurgitating your sales copy. You, a, a, a well-written testimonial needs to cover some specific things, and your testimonials should be variant, meaning, uh, you know, if one person talked about a, a lot about one particular part of your product, then the next testimonial should you talk about something else, and the next testimonial should talk about something, which means that you might need to literally modify the text in the text testimonial, and you should ask the person that's submitting that testimonial, you should say, hey, is it okay for me to maybe edit this down if it's too long, uh, or maybe move some of the text around if I need to break it up to put it on two parts of my page or whatever? You should get that permission, obviously, from the person that's supplying the testimonial. But moreover, you should give the person instructions on how to properly create a testimonial. Tell them not to ramble. Tell them to pick two or three things that, that were really useful in the product. Tell them to talk about their perfect, you know, their, their uh, preferred part of the product and why they thought it was beneficial. Tell them to mention why they think somebody else would find it beneficial. You should give them some specific things that you'd like for them to cover in their testimonial. That doesn't mean tell them what to say. That just means say, hey, look, go through my product, find two or three things that you like, and then talk about those two, three things. Tell me why you like them and mention why you think other people would like them. Those simple instructions will lead to powerful testimonials that will really help you make sales. The purpose of putting a testimonial on your page is to get people over the fence. Every testimonial should relate to someone that's out there in your audience. So I like to diversify my testimonials. I know that I have a wide range of viewers and a wide range of prospects, right? I have soccer moms. I have older people. I have younger people. I have male. I have female. I have professors. I have doctors. I have ditch diggers. I have full-time workers, retirees, baby boomers. So I should put a, you know, a person that they would relate to. So I'll have a young male, I'll have a young female, I'll have an older male, I'll have an older female, I'll have a soccer mom, I'll have a professional guy, I'll have a construction worker. I want to have as many parts of the demographics that I'm trying to market to represented in the testimonial section. Again, abundant social proof. Like I said, this is a very, very powerful way to sell products. And again, you, you can't, you're not going to be able to go and literally say, well, I need a construction worker. I need, you know, what I'm saying is you want to try to vary the types of people that you have. For example, if you've got all women uh, in the age of, uh, you know, 30 to 40 in, in, on your sales page, that's going to be tough now for, a, a, you know, a man like me to relate uh, I mean, I'm not saying that it's going to be useless to have that testimonial on there, but I'm just saying if you had uh, some men on there as well, it, it would, you know, it would relate. It would relate with me a lot better, right? Okay, so that being said, the next thing in the body that I like to include, this is optional. Uh, I wouldn't just throw it in there for the sake of throwing it in there, but a bonus product. Uh, it's, it's basically called value stacking. And when you already at this point of the social proof, People are pretty sold by this point. You've already, uh, you know, told, covered the problem. You've covered the imagines. You've talked about the solution. You presented the product, the feature, the benefits. Now they've seen a whole bunch of people that have given testimonials that have already liked the product. They're sold already. They're 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 already thinking, eh, this might be something I'm gonna buy. Throwing a bonus product in here that they're going to get for free if they take action today is going to push them over the fence. So you might consider putting an additional product here that's going to complement the main offer. Don't just put a bonus in there that's, you know, just for the sake of having one. But uh, if you put a bonus in here, make sure that you list features and benefits of the bonus. Don't create an entirely new sales page about this bonus now. Just a little blurb about the bonus, maybe a picture of the item, not as big as the main item because you don't want to take your, your uh, oomph and your, your, your whole thud factor away from the main item, but you just want to have some bullets and you want to mention, hey, if you act today, you're also going to get this bonus product. So again, an optional thing I sometimes include in the body, which works really well. The close. Now, in the close of the letter, uh, we're going to reiterate the benefits. We're going to rehash what we talked about. We're basically going to summarize things. We're going to recap the offer, let them know what they're getting and, uh, and how cool it is that they're going to get it today. You know, so you're going to use closing words, action words. You're going to, you're going to speak in the affirmative. You're going to speak as if they're already a buying, paying customer. You know what I mean? you you want to, you want to basically, uh, tell them that it's time to buy. Abolish their apprehensions. 
you literally have to bring up the anticipated objections in the sales copy and you have to solve them head on. Don't tiptoe around the tulips with people. If you know that the three most common objections are the price point and, and maybe the, uh, uh, that, 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 I don't know, that maybe it's a seasonal product that they, they might think they don't, they don't need it, uh, or maybe they think it has a whole bunch of features, that, that, whatever. Whatever the common objections are for your product, then that's what you're going to bring up here. Literally, bring it up, talk about it, and overcome it. Hit the objections head on. Price justification, that's the next thing in the close. Now, a, a lot of people screw this up as well. Price justification, they say something like, uh, for the price of two cups of latte macchiato with sprinkles from uh, uh, Starbucks, you can have this awesome product. That is not price justification. One thing has absolutely nothing to do with the other. Price justification is when you actually add up the value of the individual components in your offer, and then you explain what they would cost to purchase separately in the real world. So let's say your product has, you know, uh, I don't know, you have a blogging product and it comes with a, a theme, and it also comes with a plugin, and it comes with uh, a pre-written post for your blog, uh, and then you can break down and say, look, if you were to go and get these 10 posts written at $10 each, they would literally cost you $100 just to make the post. And if you were to go and buy a plugin for your WordPress site that would actually make these comments appear this way, uh, then you would actually pay another $20, $30. And if you were to go out and then get the theme built, uh, I mean, building it yourself would cost you, you know, hundreds of dollars. But let's say you were to buy a, uh, somebody else's theme. I mean, it's going to cost you 12, 15 bucks at least. If we add this all up, it's going to cost you $200 to go out and purchase these things separately. But for $47 today, you're going to get all that and you're going to save all that. That is called price justification. You're justifying why they're going to pay only $47 as opposed to going out and having to pay $197 to accomplish the task, right? So that's how you justify the price for your product. Next in the close is the guarantee. The guarantee has to make them feel like you're removing the financial risk. Your guarantee has got to make them feel like they're not really parting with their money, right? Now, obviously, it ceases to be their money the moment that they hand it over to you. It becomes your money. However, People like to feel like they they have like a, a way of getting their money back. Like it's just on a long leash, basically. They like to feel like, okay, well, I'm kind of just letting you hold my money while I check out your product, okay? And if you can accomplish that, they feel that way, like you're just shouldering the risk for them and, and they're just investing in you and that they can get that investment back if they're unhappy, then you're going to have a successful guarantee. The last part of the sales letter is the call to action. It's very, very important that you're very assertive in the call to action. You got to tell them that it's time to buy. That's it. You've, you've gotten the proof. You've seen how happy people are. You've admitted to yourself that you need this product. You know it's a problem that you have. I showed you the solution. You know I'm an expert already. Well, it's time to buy. Don't beat around the bush about this. Just tell them to go and buy. The acceptance form is your order area. I like to make this, this part of the page look different than the entire page. It should be in a different color. It should be, it, it needs to stand out visually from the rest of the page. So if somebody was scrolling down the page, boop, they'd stop here. They'd be like, well, wait, this looks different. And they'd be compelled to stop there. Uh, it, it really needs to stand out from the page. So it's not just a, 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 a payment button. It's an order area, right? Uh, I, I like to have a big pre-ticked yes with, with affirmative wording, something like, yes, Omar, I want to buy this right now, you know, and, and a big check mark, like, like they've literally already chosen to buy. I'm assuming the sale. This is called business posture. You're literally assuming that they want the product. Uh, and I follow it with a bullet list uh, of everything that's included. So just like an order form, uh, like if they were filling out and signing an invoice or purchasing a purchase order, for example. Uh, but I like to have that big pre-ticked yes with affirmative wording right at the top of the uh, risk-free order section. Now, I like to use a Belcher button or a derivative of the Belcher button uh, whenever possible. If you've never 
If you've never heard of the term, term Belcher button, then I urge you to Google Belcher button and watch Perry Belcher's video about the important parts of a payment button and why these components need to be in there. Uh, payment buttons should be orange or yellow with dark navy blue text. That just has been tested over and over again. It's what works. It's what Amazon uses and all the big websites use. Uh, and it just works. It, people are used to, uh, you know, they feel more comfortable. They feel more secure clicking that button. Uh, watch the bell your button video. Uh, the button should include uh, credit card icons uh, right beneath it so you can leverage the, uh, you know, the familiarity of the Visa logo, the MasterCard logo, the PayPal logo. That stuff should all be right beneath your order button uh, with as well a dashed border. Dashed borders around the payment area have been uh, proven to increase sales, okay? So make sure you watch that Belcher button video. You'll be very impressed. Trust seals. Now look, this is indisputable. Trust seals go a long way when you add them below your order button. Uh, people, they they love that added layer of protection. We've talked about this as well in a prior video. Add trust seals beneath your order button and watch the you know the conversion soar through the roof. I am trustworthy is going to make your prospects feel more secure about buying because it literally is an additional layer of protection. It's a way that people can learn about you. They kind of feel like, oh, well, if this guy does me wrong, I could always go and leave a comment on I am trustworthy about him. So again, adding these seals are going to increase your sales. Use an actual signature image down at the bottom like you did uh, down on uh, up on top, you know, by the uh, by, in the greeting. Uh, I recommend that you you do a signature and a picture of yourself down at the bottom. And I like using PSs. Uh, so, you know, a regular letter would have a signature at the bottom and probably a PS. I use PS, PPS, PPPS, uh, you know, and, and the reason for that is you want to, in your PS is you want to recap the most important parts of your sales letter. The reason for this is that a great majority of people, when they land on a sales page, after they get through the deck, they don't read your sales page in order. They scroll all the way down till they hit bottom and they skim your page in reverse. So literally the PSs might be the second thing that they're reading out of everything that you've put on your sales page. This has been proven in hot, you know, not proven, but rather this has been demonstrated in heat map uh, type of split test where we can actually see what people do when they land on the page. Uh, there's software out there that does that. And I've seen multiple studies on this where people actually include these PSs and their recaps down at the bottom of the page because a great majority of people, and I'm not going to take a stab or guess at what the exact number is because this will vary from product to product and page to page but a great majority of people read your page in reverse order so it's good to start with a recap uh, or rather to end with a recap so that when people start reading your page from the bottom up they're literally reading uh, you know in, in the right order they're learning something about your product they're getting the recap right at the bottom so remember we don't live in a utopia, okay? Uh, a lot of people think that none of these things, oh, it doesn't matter as long as I have a good product, people will buy, I don't need good sales copy, I don't have to have a nice looking page, it doesn't have to be awesome, I don't have to spend 50 bucks on a nice logo and a nice page design. Uh, yes, you do. We don't live in a utopia, you're in a fantasy world. Appearance does matter in our world. It does matter. So. If, if, if you want to keep thinking that you can show up to a job interview dressed like you, you slept in your clothes with your zipper down with a bone through your nose and your hair uncombed smelling like you, you're not going to get the job. Why? Because appearance matters in our world. It's important. Everything that they hear and see on their screen will affect their decision to buy. Colors, fonts, layout, everything plays a role in the mark that you're going to make on the prospect. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. These things are important. Don't just, you know, leave them to the end. Consider how you're going to sell your product. Consider how the sales page is going to read, what headline you're going to use, what proof image you're going to use. Consider these things as you're creating your product. You know, maybe keep a little swipe file or a little text document so as you're getting ideas during the creation of your product, you say, oh, wow, that would be a good thing to add to my sales page. Let me throw that in that little document that I've been keeping some notes about so that I have something to start building upon when I want to create my sales page, okay? Now, you can do all that. You can do everything right. You can follow this video. Uh, you can read this over and over. And maybe your, your page still doesn't convert right. Well, look, 
At the end of the day, split testing is really what's going to help you perfect your page. If, if you're not sure about a headline, well, create two, create three, and maybe split test it. You can install split testing software on your website that actually rotates the headlines so that every other visitor sees a different headline. And then maybe after a couple hundred vid visitors, pull a report, see which one performed the best, see which headline got you the best. And you'll see, it's amazing to look at split test results because you'll literally, you, 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 sometimes you'll just change one or two words and you'll see that that one particular change resulted in like doubled sales. So people that, twice as many people that saw that page actually bought the product than people that saw the other headline. It's amazing to see this, but remember that when you're split testing stuff, if you've, if you've resorted to try to split test in order to raise your conversions, the main things that will affect conversions are the deck, which is the top six inches, the components that we talked about in the deck, because that's what they see first. It's what decides whether or not they stay on the page. And the next thing is the offer. The offer, the price point, the way you've structured it, the particular things that you're giving and selling them in the front, whether you're selling high ticket on the front or low ticket on the front and high ticket on the back, you know, that combination, the offer itself is is the second biggest thing uh, that I would have to say. I, I'd say it's a, it's a close second, if not a tie with the deck as far as what's the most important thing to make people buy on your sales page. Watch this video over and over. And as a matter of fact, I suggest that anytime that you're creating a sales page, whether it's for a software tool, an information product, what have you, I suggest you rewatch this video and that you follow the templates that we've included so that you can actually start off with a format for success. I hope you've enjoyed this video and all the other ones that we've been talking about on the subject. And I look forward to seeing you inside the members area. And uh, I hope that uh, you have a lot of success with kick-ass sales pages in the future. Take care.